Hello. I'm here to talk about kind of the new culture of, of chefs. Um, as all of you know, it's kind of, in the last few years, really changed to what it used to be. Uh, it's become a really acceptable job for him now. It's a form of celebrity, and the general public knows a lot more about it than they ever have. Uh, it wasn't always this way, but ever since I started cooking, uh, that was what it was. Uh, I started cooking when I was 10. My mom was a pretty terrible cook. Uh, so I was like, OK, I can definitely do better than you as a very precocious 10-year-old. Um, so she was all for it. She was like, great. Take over. Let's go buy you a cookbook. So we went to Barnes & Noble or whatever. And being a 10-year-old, I wanted the one that was the most expensive thing wrapped in plastic on the top shelf. Uh, that turned out to be the French Laundry Cookbook. In case you know what the French Laundry Cookbook is, because I didn't when I was 10, uh, it's a book about this restaurant, the French Laundry, which is in Napa Valley. It's three Michelin stars. Uh, Thomas Kelly, great restaurant. Uh, this is actually, after I got the book, this is, I'm still not a big fan of this photo. That's me when I was 10 with Thomas Keller. Uh, <laughs> someone pointed out I might look like a lesbian in that, a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I've changed. Um, <laughs> so I got the book, and that's a very difficult book to cook from if you don't know how to cook. So I started to learn all the basics, and then from there started to cook from the actual book. And after I learned from that book and a bunch of other books and the internet and all that stuff, uh, the next step was kind of to go into a restaurant. That's what every chef had told me. That's what you have to do. So thankfully, at 12, I had found a few restaurants uh, where they would let me come in the kitchen, uh, one of them being 11 Madison Park in New York. And there's me at 12 at 11 Madison Park. Uh, also a ridiculous photo. In that kitchen was really kind of where I started to learn everything about cooking and what I loved so much about it. And it was so inspiring that while I wasn't there every single day of the week, I wanted to practice what I learned there and kind of use what I had learned to create my own dishes. So I started doing these dinners out of my house in LA for, at first it was like five or six of my parents' friends. It wasn't really a a big thing, it was just me cooking a few dishes. Then it started to tumbleweed, and we were doing 15 course menus for 30 people in my living room, and I turned my kitchen into a bedroom, and my, vice versa, my bedroom into a kitchen. It was more of a kitchen than bedroom. I had, a, I had a Murphy bed, and it was a full operating kitchen. And this was it in our dining room. Uh, once it got to a point where there was a bunch of strangers coming to my house, my mom wasn't a big fan of that, so uh, we moved it to a restaurant. And that's another shot of the kitchen. Uh, so we started doing these things called pop-ups. And if you haven't been on the internet in the last three years, a pop-up is <laughs> when a chef, a company, a person goes into an existing space for, could be one night, it could be a week, it could be a month, and creates a business and then closes it. Uh, this has become the new thing. I mean, you see big chefs doing it, young chefs, people who are just uh, really inspired and want to go do something for a night. It could be because it's across the world. It could be just because they don't have a restaurant. Uh, I think this has really changed the culture of being a chef, actually. Because now we have young cooks who, while they're not 13, like in that photo, they are being able to be creative and being able to be a chef before they actually have a restaurant and have the responsibility of that. And it's kind of messed up the system because the traditional system of becoming a chef is you kind of put your head down for 10, 20 years, work your way up the ranks, and one day you either get sick of it or someone gives you money and you open a restaurant. This whole concept, as well as social media and the internet and all this, has really disrupted that. And the question is, since it's been disrupted by all these new things, why is it still only acceptable to become a chef one way, by that traditional way? Other than that, it's usually you're, you're doing it wrong. You still have to be treated the same way. You still have to go through the same steps. 
So the question is, there's all these new ways, there's all these new younger people doing it, and it's starting to become more and more acceptable. Uh, and chefs are finding ways around it. They're running their kitchens in different ways. It's not the brigade so much of you do one job for your, for I don't even know how long, it depends where you are because you won't move up until someone gets fired or promoted. They're starting to have cooks have a lot more uh, responsibility and creativity. Like, I mean, Noma's famous for it with their Saturday night projects where after these cooks have worked a 100 hour work week, they still want to create their own dishes. So it's two in the morning on a Saturday night, they've just finished cleaning, and they're that obsessed with it that they will stick around for another three hours and just cook and try each other's food. I mean, that's really cool. I mean, we're in this industry because we're so obsessed with cooking that nothing really matters. And I think that idea is also why the idea that you have to go this exact path is kind of diluted because if the whole thing with this industry is it's really aw it's awful, a lot of it is kind of awful. You work really long hours, it's really hard, it's really stressful. So the formatting of it itself is gonna weed people out. It's not so much of weeding them out by yelling at them, by treating them awfully, by not giving anyone respect. That's gonna happen eventually. They'll they'll if they're not in it. <laughs> They're not in it because they love it and they're not going to work every single day. They're going to stop. So the idea of chefs still treating cooks awfully, which is the traditional way that it's done, where your cooks are like your slaves and you can treat them however you want. You can beat them. You can throw things at them. It's People are starting to move away from it, but it's still there. And it also makes for a guest's meal even worse. If I was, which I was, a cook who messed something up a few times, a good amount of times when I was starting, you're doing something. Say I was cooking a scallop, and I made a scallop, and it was overcooked, and I handed it up to the chef to plate, and it was, it was overcooked. They would yell at me, and now I'm freaking out. Now I'm shaking, now I'm really stressed out. Now I'm not gonna do my job right, because I'm in my head. I'm not focusing on cooking, I'm not, actually cooking it, I'm thinking, oh my god, I don't want to get yelled at again. It's not so much about the actual product, it's about not being yelled at. And then, because I'm really nervous about overcooking it, I might hand him a scallop that's undercooked. And then we go through the whole thing again. At this point, you as a customer have just waited 20 minutes. Now you're mad, now you're going to write a bad Yelp review or whatever, then the chef's going to get mad, and then he's going to get mad about that, so he's going to yell at me again. So it's a whole cycle. Or that all could have been avoided by him just going, just like, your scallop's not cooked enough. I don't see why, it was, why it's that hard. But it's still the idea of it's a very macho, I mean, you look, the industry is mostly men who are in a kitchen together, they yell at each other, they tease each other, which, yes, is part of it. But does it really have to be part of it? You see with pop-ups, you see with all these new trends that the industry is changing so much, but there are still parts of it that are so set in its ways. And I think as kind of the next generation, the idea is why does it have to stay that way? It's already changed so much that why not go that uh, extra step? Even how I say, there are parts of it that are awful. That could all change. I mean, why, why is it that, that we go, all right, this is where we draw the line and just understand that this is how bad it is. You're still gonna have to do the really tedious things, but I, I mean, I, I enjoyed picking herbs if I enjoyed the kitchen. I didn't enjoy picking herbs if it was really stressful and everyone was yelling at me and it was like uncomfortable and, and there was no windows and it was just an awful situation. But if you're actually enjoying yourself, those tedious tasks aren't as tedious. And I just think that as the next generation, it should move away from the idea of hatred and from the entire industry kind of being really competitive with each other because, I mean, we're all in the same boat of working really long, not having a lot of friends, just spending time with cooks more than anyone else, and it's gone in a very negative way, as I've seen. Everyone kind of does a lot of shit talking. That's what the industry is based off of. But everyone works just as hard, so 
I think we should kind of give everyone a chance and let, I mean, let the market kind of figure it out. Because if you cook bad food and you don't do your job well, no one's really going to keep coming back. And then you'll just kind of disintegrate. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, the, the, the general idea is, is why would we hinder new chefs from coming into this, from being inspired, from wanting to do a great job by telling them that it's awful. By t I mean, I was told from the second I got into this about how bad it was. That was, any time I went up to a chef, I was like, I want to be a chef. They were like, really? That's going to be terrible. You don't want that life. That's not nice. I was like 10 and really liked it. <laughs> and I would like go up to a chef and be like, oh, I want to be a chef. And they'd be like, you're going to have a cocaine problem. They still tell me that. Or it could be, I want to be a chef, and that is like a great thing. And if I was awful and just didn't want to work and didn't want to do it, then whatever. I would just go into banking. But <laughs> same thing. So yes, we should all be nice to each other because we're all in, a, in the same dark, sweaty kitchen and working equally as hard. And uh, I think that's it. Just, yeah. I, I don't think I finished. Thank you.